So today is hopefully the day when we will finally figure out what is wrong with this Voodoo 2. I already made two videos about this card. The first one is linked in the top right corner. But if you remember correctly, we have an issue with this card on the FBI chip. Even though I have eight memory chips, which total to four megabytes, the FBI chip only sees one megabyte of video memory. And that causes the card to not work. I could have gone ahead and replaced all the memory chips and maybe replace the duck or the 8-bit buffer here, or as the last possibility, replace the 3DFX chip. But I told some of you in the comments, and I also mentioned it in my last video, that I'm waiting for something from a viewer, which will make debugging 3DFX cards a lot easier. And I don't know if it will work, but I have a feeling that this tool, so it's a software, is going to revolutionize how we are going to debug 3DFX cards in the future. And by the way, I tried many things. I followed some of your advice using diode mode, trying each connector of the memory chip, see if there is something different. But everything looks fine. To me, the memory chips really look okay. I don't think there is any problem with the memory chips. So what I will do now, instead of just trying to debug this card immediately, I will go ahead and test this card. This is the card from the scrapyard seen in my last video. This one works perfectly. What I will do now is I will run the tool and we will debug this card first. This should give us an idea how the tests should look like when they are successful. And then we can see what is going to happen when we test this card. So as I said, it's a tool, it's a software tool. It is going to perform low level diagnostics far more intensive than you have seen Mojo can do. And yeah, if you know somebody who has a broken 3DFX card or you think it's valuable to them, please share this video with them. I'm really looking forward to hear the response from the community regarding that tool. And uh, maybe this is going to, as I said before, revolutionize how we deal with broken Voodoo cards. So let me go ahead and put this working 3DFX card into the test system and uh, we will see how the tool looks like, what it does and what output we get. But before we test the card, a quick shout out to PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. If you are in need of CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding or PCB manufacturing, PCBWay is the ideal partner to help you with your projects. Plus, there are still a few days where you can check out PCBWay's 10th anniversary tour. You can find exclusive coupons and participate in a lucky draw. And of course, if you're interested in any of my projects, check out PCBWay's shared project space where you can find all my projects that I made with the help of PCBWay. So check out PCBWay.com and turn your projects into reality. Links are in the video description. Okay, the card is in the test system and it is a Pentium 3. You need a Pentium 2, I think. This is the minimum requirement. And uh, we are going to start the tool called Witchery. This is the tool I received from my viewer. And we are going to figure out now what this tool is going to do with the working Voodoo 2. So I already prepared everything. It's a very simple image file. It runs under Linux, but it does work under DOS. It will just boot up a Linux environment and then start. You have to start the tool actually manually, but I will show you how this works. I already copied the tool on my drive under Witchery. And here are the files. So there are two image files. The first two with the larger size are the two image files. Then we have a, a loader executable but we have to start VLLT so VLLT now it tells you that hey we are going to leave the DOS environment and we will start Linux there is no way to come back uh, into DOS so you have to restart the PC once you're done but uh, we are going to continue now and now we are going to start the Linux environment so as I said, you need at least a Pentium 2. 
it did not work on a Pentium system. And once all the image loaded for the Linux environment, we are prompted with a command line. So what we have to do here, we just have to start witchery once more. Witchery. Ah. Uh, okay, I only have a USB keyboard attached right now and this does not work. Okay, let me... Let me plug in a keyboard. I know that PS2 is not hot pluggable, but let's double check. Okay, okay, so it did. We'll figure it out. Okay, seems like it works. So, okay, with re. And the tool starts running. So as I understand, this tool is performing also a memory test, which we will see here probably. The tool will try to go through all of the memory that's attached to the FBI. I don't think the TMUs are yet to be able to be tested as far as I understand, because there is very little information about the TMUs available data sheets and pinout diagrams and so on. So yeah, I think this is limited to FBI debugging, but it can also debug the digital analog converter and it tests all kinds of connections between all of these chips. So we are expecting here a complete positive result, which means the card basically works flawlessly. But we will then test the broken card and I'm very fortunate because the tool right now is capable to debug the FBI chip, which is the problem on our card. So I'm really curious what's going to happen when we debug the other Voodoo 2. And I hope there will be a possibility to extend this tool to the TMU chips. My viewer said that he is going to release the tool once it's done. At the moment it's still in beta, but once it's complete, it will be open sourced most likely. And then I'm pretty sure this will be the basis of even more extensive 3DFX debugging software. I wouldn't be able to do something like this, but I'm really amazed how the retro community is coming up with these tools and trying to debug cards that are no longer manufactured for over 20, 25 years. Crazy. So my viewer, his name is Maxim. I hope I can mention this. I didn't check with him yet. He has a YouTube channel that's four times bigger than mine. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy and thankful that Maxim reached out to me and said, hey, listen, I have something that may be able to help you, even though it's not yet done. Maybe my card will help to debug another case. So yeah, we will see. So I did this test once before and it's going to run for about eight minutes. I think if I'm not mistaken, it took eight minutes and 20 seconds. And in between there are sometimes these pauses that you can see here with this dark reddish background. But once all of this is done, we should see an extensive debugging output and it's going to look at every single memory chip that is connected to the FBI. It will check connectivity between FBI and DAC and it can tell you if there is, for instance, a short between data lines. It will actually tell you which pin on the FBI has an issue or which pin on the memory chip is causing the issue. So it just points you in the right direction. You still have to do the work yourself, but instead of guessing, you will be able to look through the debug output and see okay, on this area I have to focus. And that is amazing. Because I checked so many pins on this Voodoo card already. I was trying to go from pin, 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 pin on the memory chips, trying to figure out, okay, what kind of resistance do I get to ground diode mode? What kind of value do I get? They all look fine. I don't know what's the problem. I don't know if it's the duck. I don't know if it's the FBI. I don't know if it's a memory chip. Maybe it's only one memory chip. But yeah, so we will see how this will turn out. I'm really curious. So this is the good card for now. It's just to show you how this thing works. And um, yeah, 
So I guess we should skip a few of these memory tests because there's really nothing else. It will continue like this for another five minutes approximately. And then we should get an output, which is far more interesting than looking at these bars coming up and down. Okay, and here we are. So we can scroll with page up, page down, but we need to press the shift key and then we can scroll up through the debug output. Let's see where I started. So here I started with witchery, my command that I entered in the fourth line from the top. And then we see witchery voodoo low level test utility starting up. Compile date 15th of August. So this is one day ago, actually. So Maxim was so kind and provide a specific version for me. Um, so what do we get? Non-3DFX PCI devices. So I guess this is my 2D card. I have a Matrox Millennium in there. Then we see some other devices. And then it says detected 3DFX devices. We have one, I guess. Uh, vendor 121A device 0002. So single 3DFX device found using it. Okay, Voodoo Handler starting up. Then we get opening some stuff, performing witchery. This is a 3DFX Voodoo 2. Okay, so I detected that we have a Voodoo 2 in the system. Uh, just for reference, why it says like a single 3DFX device found. You can have as many 3DFX devices as you possibly can connect to your motherboard. The tool should be able to debug all of them at once. Of course, I, I think it will take more time during the testing phase, but you should get all the outputs in one go at the end. But we have only one Voodoo 2 installed, so that's good. So and now we see stage one complete, and then it continues with testing FBI chuck to PCI connection. So the FBI chip has an abbreviation lasered onto the housing. It's uh, The abbreviation is CK, and that's why the FBI chip gets the nickname chuck. So we have the first node. Utility will now write to the registers in FBI. If system hangs, the Voodoo board is defective. FBI registers test passed successfully, resetting to defaults. And basically the FBI to PCI link test passed successfully. So stage two is complete. Now we have testing FBI Chuck to RAMDAC. So now we are testing to our digital to analog converter. Quite a short debugging output here, but it says RAMDAC data bus test passed successfully. Address bus also passed successfully. So FBI to RAMDAC is fine. And it even detected the RAMDAC ICS5342. Yes, this is... Yes, this is what I have on my Voodoo card, so this is good. Testing RAMDAC PLL setup. So what is this? PLL registers are at default values okay. Tests passed. Then setting 3D clock to 90 megahertz. And I guess the second line after setting 3D clock is the response because it's a little bit of a different number, but it's close to 90. Then setting pixel clock to 65 megahertz and we get back 64.942. So stage four is complete, but now comes the interesting part. This is the memory tests. So we have the frame buffer RAM connections. Now it will test all the memory chips on the board to see if there is a good connection and probably if the data that is being sent into the memory is also coming back the same way. If you look at the Voodoo PCB, you will usually see some names on the bigger chips on the silk screen and U4, U5, U6, U7 are dedicated to the memory. I think there is also U1, U3 and so on for I think the FBI chip itself and the RAM DAC. So this, these are just the labels of those chips on the silk screen. So first I guess it checks if the chip is available. This is the bus test passed successfully, address bus test successfully for U4, 5, 6 and 7. I think it also tests the chips on the back. We will see if there is an issue on the other card. I've seen debugging output that mentions the chips that are on the back of the board with U21, 22, 23. But this is not the case here right now because I guess everything is fine. So the FBI frame buffer rambling test passed successfully. Stage 5 is complete. And we are setting the pixel clock to 65 megahertz again. 
So what else? FBI, frame buffer, RAM integrity. I think this is now when we are testing if the memory actually is functioning properly and we don't have any memory errors on any of the memory chips that are on the card. So here is the memory chip U4 and it goes verification step by step. And we have data storm test started. I don't know what storm means. I guess it's like a hurricane of data that is going into the chips. And uh, U4 integrity test passed successfully. So testing U4 is fine. Now we continue with U5. It does exactly the same thing here. Then we have U6. U7. And we're done. So we see that the Voodoo test is completed. We have no error logs or something like this in the output, so this looks good. We have then a little bit more information at the end of the test where you see some timings, some megahertz uh, settings that are still being executed and uh, we are waiting for the board to respond and we are exiting. So this is the tool that we are trying to run against the other Voodoo card now. This is what we're expecting from a known good Voodoo card. So this is the card definitely that works. You've seen it in my other video. Tomb Raider was working fine after I installed the Voodoo Rush and Voodoo 2 patch. And uh, now let's uh, switch the boards. I will install the broken Voodoo 2 board now and then we will see what is going to happen. I hope you're as excited as I am because I hope that this is going to point me at least in the right direction. Okay, so see you in a bit. Okay, the broken Voodoo 2 is now installed and now we will perform the same test again. This time I have the correct keyboard connected. So, CD witchery again we have to execute vllt which should run our linux environment and then we have to start witchery once more and then we will see what's going to happen i'm really nervous right now that would be so cool if this tool would tell me what's going on with this voodoo card okay so witchery Let's see. Oh, we are getting an output different from what we have seen before. Okay, FBI RAM, I already see something. So let's see, what do we get? We have an output, so let's, let's go one by one. So we see it detected a 3DFX device. Vendor ID is again 121A device, single 3DFX device found. Um, this is a 3DFX Voodoo 2, revision 4, fab 1. This is exactly what we saw before. Testing FBI, PCI connection. Uh, will now system hang successfully. Okay, FBI and the PCI works correctly. Testing RAMDAC. RAMDAC is successful. The RAMDAC is not the issue. So everything looks fine. And it detects the RAMDAC chip as well. What is RAMDAC PLL setup? Default values, okay, looks fine. Stage four is okay. Now comes FBI chuck frame buffer RAM connection. Oh, FB, frame buffer RAM, debus stock low. Okay, I think I have to go back to Maxim to understand what's going on, but it looks like U6. So I have one memory chip. Let me check quickly. U6 is the place where the memory chip exploded. Ooh, maybe we have a problem with the trace or worse, maybe something happened to the FBI chip, but well, it, I, I don't have to replace any of the other memory chips. It's, it's definitely U6 based on this tool. So we have DBus stuck low and data bus failed at bits, whatever that means. I don't know exactly, but 
Yeah, so the other memory chips here look like they were tested successfully. U4, 5, and 7. 6 has the issue. I will show this later on when I'm going to desolder the chip. So I will definitely remove U6. But let's see what else we get here. So what we have now is check next pins for good connection and or shorts. So let's check the next section. FBI U3, so this is our name of the chip and frame buffer RAM U6. And now you can see here frame buffer RAM U21. This is the one on the back. I guess those two somehow either are linked together or I don't know, they probably built up this one megabyte. And now comes the funny thing. So the FBI pin 64 and data zero of our U6 chip has an issue. That's so interesting. So you, And then you get some uh, description below. U3 is a big IC at the bottom center of the board with 3DFX 500-009-000901 on it. This is our FBI chip. U21 is located on the back side of the board, right under U6. So these two must share some either data lines or CUS, RAS signals, something like this. Those two just build up one unit. U6 is a bottom right IC in a cluster of four ICs in the bottom right corner. So now if you go down even one further, you will see all this information nicely outlined. Come on, I, please like this video and give a huge shout out to Maxim and uh, check out his channel. Just follow him and, and help him out, man. This is, this is amazing. So yes, it's U6, it's the chip on the bottom right corner. This is the one that had that big hole in it and damaged the PCB. But we will have to figure out what's going on. And the nice thing is I know now it's pin number two. We will have a look at the pinout diagram of these memory chips once more and see if D0 or pin number two is one of the pads I fixed or if it's on the other side, we will, we will see this. So this tool can really help you figure out what's going on. So yeah, it cannot continue with the TMU tests because uh, I guess first the FBI RAM has to be fixed, but we have a very, very good lead now what we have to look at. Man, this is amazing. Thank you so much, Maxime, for this little tool. If this tool helps me to fix this Voodoo 2 card, man, this is amazing. This is, this is just great. So I guess I will get my hot air station out and remove this one chip again. And then let's see if we can figure out what's going on. I don't think the FBI chip is broken by now because clearly it can try to access the memory. But uh, yeah, you never know. Maybe, maybe still something internally has caused an issue. I hope not, but... Yeah, either it's this memory chip and this data line or it's something else. We will figure that out. Okay, see you in a bit. So I took out the card now and every time I said U6 in the previous video, I also meant U21. U21 is exactly the chip on the opposite side of U6, which is this chip here in the corner. So I double check the measurements again um, with the multimeter. If I go and I want to measure Let's see if I can hit this one. So this is uh, pin D0 or D1 in the data sheet. And the next one also measures the same value. And so does every other memory chip here. These ones are supposed to be working based on the tool. So we everywhere get 0 0.5 volts, which indicates that it I, I don't know exactly. It's a voltage drop probably for whatever that circuit is doing here. This was told to me that I should check this and see if I see something suspicious, so I don't. And uh, that leads me to believe that there are two possibilities now. Either this memory chip is faulty or the one on the other side, or our FBI chip is damaged. And the data line that goes to the FBI chip is the one here on the bottom. This is pin... 64. This is what we've seen on the diagram. 
So even if I go with the multimeter here, I see 0 0.52. Then here is another one, the 65. Pin 65 is right next to it. And this one also shows about the same. So I have a suspicion that, or I hope at least that the memory chips are faulty that I put on this board. And if not, then maybe something internally in the 3DFX chip happened because this data line is connected to that one chip that blew up and there is a possibility that something internally got damaged and that will be very unfortunate. So what I will do now is I will remove both of these chips, U6 and U21 with the hot air station. And then I will try to run this card on the system again, see what Mojo says and see what Witchery says. And then we can see if it makes sense to remove the 3DFX chip and replace it with the spare one that I have. Or maybe we are lucky and all we need is two new memory chips. Okay, the card without the memory chips is now back in the board. I cleaned the pads. Let's see what we get. Okay, we get a boot. That's good. Let's check what Mojo has to say. Okay. Mojo. Okay, now we get zero megabytes on the FBI. I only replaced, I only removed these two chips and we are back to zero. Um, okay, so I don't know what could be the reason. So clearly when I have that one chip installed on the front, we do get one megabyte. Now we get zero with the chip removed on the front. I think the chip on the back has no say in whatever Mojo displays here. So let's try Witchery. VLLT. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Witchery. And I'm expecting the completely we will not go through any tests and okay. So what did we get now? Oof, we get the same. That can only mean we have the same output. The other memory chips are still detected, I guess, but the other two locations are not. So I guess that means that we have a failed 3DFX chip. This is what I believe now. I think our 3DFX chip is damaged. It shows exactly the same output, even though there are no memory chips. It could be a trace, but to be honest, I. I measured everything multiple times and I really couldn't find anything. Everything looks normal. I think the PCB is okay. It must be the 3DFX chip. And if you see here, it mentions exactly the same pins. FBI, pin 64, pin 2 on either U6 or U21. They are fine. Those pads connect to the FBI chip and I could not spot any short with any ground plane or with any neighboring pin whatsoever. So it looks like that FBI chip is damaged. So I guess I will get my hot air station out again and try to 
harvest the FBI chip from the donor card. Unfortunately, it has twisted legs, so I have to be careful and I have to probably bend in place a lot of pins. But yeah, this is the next thing I have to do, so yeah. Uh, what a shame. Anyway, I will start doing this now and then let's see what happens. Okay, so here is our 3DFX card and now I will try to remove this 3DFX chip. Unfortunately, it's not enough space on the camera to see everything. So let me just put flux around the pins and then we can try to lift this chip from the pads. I really believe this chip is damaged, so I still don't want to be harsh with it. Maybe if the other chip also doesn't work, then it might not be the 3DFX chip, but I'm pretty certain that it is because I tried so many things. I measured all the pads, all the connections, everything seemed to be fine. So I'm pretty sure our 3DFX chip got too much voltage from that exploded memory chip. Okay, I have no flux everywhere. Let's try to lift this chip. Okay, let's see how badly I messed up. I think I didn't bend any pins. So how do our pads look like? They all look great. Nothing to complain, okay. Okay, great. I will clean these now and then I will try to get the other chip off the donor card, which has all the pins spent. Okay, the FBI chip is off. Let's see how bad the damages. Maybe I'm lucky and there's not much what we have to fix apart from whatever damage was already there. Okay, looks good. Okay, I think if this chip works then we have a donor.
So now it's time to clean around the chip and see if all the legs connect to the pads and if there are any solder bridges, but I didn't notice anything, so let's see. Okay, I removed most of the flux and I checked already the other three sides and everything looks good. I see no solder bridges. Now I'm just checking the last side if all the pins attach. The chip doesn't look too bad. I think I managed to get most of the pins realigned. Uh, I don't think it's easy to spot that this chip was replaced. Now we just have to see if it works. This is the biggest question right now. If we get the same output as before, then I guess there will be a fourth part because clearly it's not the chip. I couldn't spot anything on the traces or the memory chips. Okay, so this chip was successfully moved from the donor card to the Diamond Monster 3D2. And it looks quite decent, what do you think? It's, uh, legs are a little bit over the pads, but they have quite a big surface, so they stuck nicely to the pads below. Yeah, and this side we just saw, I checked. Okay, so I will put this in the test system now, and let's see what Mojo and Witchery has to say. Okay, the card is in the test system. Now I'm really curious what's going to happen. Okay, I think everything is set up. Let's see if this 3DFX chip actually works. I have no idea, it came from a donor card. And let's see if we get a different output from Mojo or from Witchery. I still have the missing memory chips. So U6 and U21 are still not populated. But let's see, oh, nervous, nervous, let's check. Okay, no trip of the power supply and we get a boot. So we, the Voodoo card is actually passing through the 2D signal. Okay, let's see. Come on, Mojo, give me a different, give me something different. Please. Oh, we still have zero megabytes. It's the same. Did I just? Well, at least the FBI is reporting in uh, in Mojo, so I guess the transplant was okay, but I still have zero megabytes. <sighs> Let's see what we get in Witchery. If the same bits are low, then I hope we just have a problem with the data line, but I checked this so many times. What what could be wrong? Okay. Witchery. It's the same. Oh, that's different. What is happening? Oh. That doesn't look good at all. Or does it? Hey, wait a second. This is U6. Okay, it detects that the... Hey! Maybe it detects that the chip is not there, and that's why we get a different output. I guess... Aha! Wait a second! U6, data bus test passed successfully. We didn't get this before. I think this might have worked. So I saw this one, what you see here, FBI, uh, PCI connection. Uh, this happened, I noticed this before, when I run... Um, 
Mojo before witchery, I get this. This, I think, is nothing to uh, worry about. But I think this might have worked. It's just complaining about addressing. I mean, it complains about more chips, but I think I'll put these chips now back and then it will try again. Okay, I added both memory chips now to the card. Let's see what we get. I will immediately jump into Witchery. I will not start Mojo. We can look at Mojo afterwards. So let's see if this Voodoo card does work now. Okay, let's go. Okay, yes, boot screen, nice. Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> Please work. Oh, I'm very nervous. Didn't like a blue screen. There shouldn't be a blue screen. Hey, wait a second. I think there is something happening. Wait a second. I think I see something moving in the background. Did this card crash or does it perform memory tests? I am confused. No, I think there is something moving. Okay, but it's blue. Okay, um, I guess I will let this run now. I was not expecting a blue background, but I can see the bars going up and down. So this is a good sign, I guess. Unfortunately, this will take now about eight minutes to finish and maybe we will see more than afterwards. Maybe we have an issue with the duck, with the 8-bit buffer chip. Okay, I will be back once this card finished debugging. So unfortunately, it looks like the original FBI chip of this card has been damaged by one of the memory chips. And I'm pretty sure it was the chip in the bottom right corner that had this hole burned into the housing, which most likely sent too high voltage into the FBI chip. And we're done. So what do we have? Our U6 is here. Oh wow, I think this passed. Why do we have a blue background then? I think we have to check a game now, but okay, these are all things. Ramda connection is there. Okay, let's let's go one by one. So we have 3DFX device found. It detected the Voodoo 2. FBI PCI connection. It didn't hang, so I think our board is fine. FBI RAMDAC connection, successful. It detected the RAMDAC. PLL registers, okay, also good, I guess. Uh, what do we have here? Now we have frame buffer RAM connection and U6 finally successfully completes the test. This was not the case before. I had to replace the FBI chip on this card with a FBI chip that I found luckily on a donor card. That donor card already missed the TMU. So I think if, if that donor card by chance saved another Voodoo 2 by donating a TMU, well, it saved maybe another Voodoo 2 now by donating the FBI chip. Oh, what is this? I didn't see this. What is this random CRNG in it done? I don't know. I've not seen this before. Maybe I will check with 
Maxim what this means, but I think the tests are complete for all. Which chip was this? FBI RAM and U4. We never had anything there, so I'm I'm not sure what this is. U6 verification complete. And the tests are done. Now let's quickly check what Mojo has to say. Unfortunately, I have to reset the board. So let's do this quickly and let's go into Mojo, see what Mojo has to say. <sighs> and then we quickly start Tomb Raider and see if we also get a discoloration. Mojo. Yes, four megabytes on the FBI. Haha, <laughs> okay. Looks good. I still don't know why we got the discoloration. Maybe it's an issue with my loop cable, but let's see. Let's start Tomb Raider. Something that never worked on this card except with the wrong patch. So I really don't know why this card somehow rendered Tomb Raider with the Voodoo 1 patch. It was just discolored, but it did run it. It rendered the 3D effects logo and everything. So let's see if we boot up Tomb Raider with a Voodoo 2 patch what we will get. There is no 3DFX logo for the Voodoo patch anymore, just in case you're wondering. But let's see if we get into the menu. Yes! We get in the menu! So why did Witchery have a blue testing screen? This looks good! New game. Come on, Lara. This looks perfectly fine. Hey, the voodoo card with the exploded memory chips renders 3DFX games again. Can you imagine? Oh, wow. I am so relieved that this card finally renders 3D games. And at some point it looked a little bit bleak for this card, but luckily I had this 3DFX chip ready to be donated to this card. And now we have a working Voodoo 2. We are running on a Pentium 3 500. So this is more than enough power to keep this game nicely at the max frame rate of 30 frames per second. I don't see any memory errors. I don't see any glitches. So I don't know why we got an issue with the memory test in Witchery. But what I want to do now is to run a few benchmarks on the Windows to make sure that the card really works. So I will see you once I'm back in Windows. Okay, we are back in Windows now. Let's see if we can run a benchmark. That looks very promising. Okay, now hopefully no discoloration. Um, new benchmark. Yes, we have a Voodoo card and it detects the memory. That's good. Okay, let's just make a very quick test. I just want to see the two game benchmarks. Let's see. Benchmark. Okay, and? Yes! <laughs> oh. It works. Oh, what a relief. It looks like this 3DFX card works. Oh. That was a tough project. And thank you so much, Maxim, for sharing your tool with me. This definitely helped out a lot. Unfortunately, the FBI chip was damaged. Of course, this is something very difficult to analyze. It could be the memory. It could be the chip. Yeah, but after replacing the memory chips or removing the memory chips and then getting the same error message, it was more or less clear that there is an issue with the FBI chip. And I went the extra mile and got the 3DFX chip replaced. And now I'm being rewarded as it looks like. 
system info. Yes, everything shows up. Okay, let's try Unreal, see if we can get, this is not what I wanted to play, drivers. I don't want software, I want 3D effects. Okay. And we have a 3D FX render screen. Uh, this is so nice to see. Uh, that was a really tough project. So yeah, let me know what you think about this video. I don't want to uh, drag it for too long now. This was a very long video. I think we will scratch the one hour mark. Uh, thank you so much, Maxime. Uh, your tool is absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to let this tool run on many of my other cards. Let me know and let Maxime know what you think about his tool. I'm pretty sure that this tool is going to make debugging Voodoo cards a lot easier in the future, specifically when you have problems on the PCB or if you have damaged memory chips. And at least it can point you in the right direction. So yeah, we did test a lot of things on this Voodoo card and we eventually came to know that the 3DFX chip was damaged. But yeah, this Voodoo card is back alive and renders 3DFX titles. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. A big shout out to PCBWay for supporting my channel. Without PCBWay, I wouldn't be able to spend that much time trying to get old hardware back to life. Have a look at PCBWay.com if you're looking for a PCB manufacturer. And also thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching my video. And a big shout out also to all my Patreons. Thank you so much for your support. And now I'm off. Thank you so much. Take care and bye bye.